I'm not going to take it apart because it took me a huge amount of effort to get this plastic in here and it's working. Howdy campers, excuse the shades, but the sun is brutal right in my line of sight. You know there's an expression that says, if it's stupid, but it works, it ain't stupid. Well, check it this light. How stupid is this? This obviously is the Landy, the full wiring loom on a Landy. Pretty complicated, huh? And why have I taken these things off? This is the bottom. This is the top cover. Is to get to this little switch. This is your light switch, as we all know. Normally it burns out and you need to replace it. In this case, it didn't do that. It did something different. So let's have a quick look. So how this thing is held on is by a nut, which is fairly easily removed by 19 maybe an 18 that's probably imperial but i don't have imperials to hand and that's the problem when you're on the road uh, normally you can just order new parts to home get it done in your driveway and off you go but we don't have a driveway there it is man this is the mark one defender light switch which is pretty simple in its operation as you would expect just three wires power marker light i'll call it marker light and your headlights and all you do here is move the switch down one for the marker lights two for the headlights no big deal there right problem is this thing moves in here if you can see that as you flick it into the marker lights and to the headlights main beam that little plastic thing moves over some ridges and that little plastic um, thing <laughs> molding there is a little ball bearing on a spring and the ball bearing puts pressure so that when you move it to the middle the ball bearing comes down into the groove and it will sit there for your marker lights and if you move it a bit further it flicks over the ridge and into the other groove and in that way you have three positions off markers and headlights um, what I did to fix this because the problem here is I couldn't switch it off. I switched it to marker lights or, or your headlights and I couldn't get it off again. On a normal modern car this isn't such a big deal. They have a switch that will turn the headlights off if you forget to leave them on after about 20 minutes and you're fine, no big deal. A Defender will do the same thing but only when your battery's dead. So this was not an ideal situation having the lights on and not being able to turn them off. So what I had to do here is get a little screwdriver, pop it underneath that little ball bearing, try and get it over the ridge so I could turn it into the off position, which is not ideal because you have to take this thing out of the spearing column, right? You can't do this while you're driving. So what I did is I found this little set in our electric box, cut off some of this plastic, very thin stuff, cut it a little bit to shape, and try to get it in there to wedge it in there under that ball bearings because the ball bearing was probably worn out in that little cavity so it would go on but when you try and push it off the ball bearing would go skew and it wouldn't lift up so you can move it so now the ball bearing doesn't come out all the way this flicks pretty well actually it's got a similar kind of a, an action that it used to and with this little bit of plastic that you have lying around you make a running repair because we're not at home at this point and we don't have a driveway for which Amazon can send us a new switch. So this is how I'm driving around at the moment with a bungee cord holding the broken dashboard on. Why is that? I took this off and why did I do that is because the light switch and the fog light have to come out through here. You can't leave this on and get them out. It doesn't work. So that bottom part had to come off, which is a couple of screws, and that left the top part on. And I thought I'd drive around with the bottom half just out. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't bug me. The problem is while we were in a mountain pass, this top piece got jammed up in the steering wheel, and that's not very handy. So there it is, guys. Look at this hack. How do you guys fix your vehicle in the field while you're on the road when you're not on your driveway? I can't get the top cover back on because I need to get the steering wheel off and I don't want to do that. And I can't put the bottom cover on if the top cover is on. No, I can't put the 
top cover on without the bottom cover. Some of you that effect. So let me know what you guys think. It works, okay? We were pulled over in Spain, Spanish uh, Guardia Civil, uh, the road police. Very stern looking man, came up to the window, asked for our papers, looked all around the car, checked the insurance, checked the roadworthy, all of that. Looked, popped his head in the window, looked at this setup, bungee cords, cables going everywhere. Didn't even blink, gave me back my driver's license and said, have a nice day. So if he can do that, you tell me hey, if this is wrong or right. Let me know guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Catch you on the next one and as we are trying to do, keep riding. And in all this, I'll tell you what, all the stuff you don't need is what they put into car wiring looms these days. Can you imagine how many kilometers of wiring you have in a Veyron or a Bentley or a really souped up Toyota. You've got everything in there like, here's the list.